most of the planet was covered in jungle 65 million years ago. Massive tree ferns and club mosses offered the rich flora that dinosaurs enjoyed chomping on. When a meteorite collided with the earth, strong winds and wildfires ravaged half the forests. But plants did not perish, owing to a remarkable range of smart tricks. Some plants might have benefited from these fires, like this banksia tree today. Growing up in the Australian bush, it is used to a frequent burning. The heated air spurs its huge woody fruits to unlock. The inactive seeds are awoken by two chemicals in the smoke, and they thrive in the plush organic soil which the fire has left behind. But apart from fire, prehistoric plants had to deal with other difficulties too. For months, soot enveloped the planet, and plants are incapable of growing in the absence of sunlight. But the fern has unique seeds known as spores, which are capable of getting through rough times. These spores are so strong that they can survive extreme hot and cold temperatures. They would remain inactive throughout those gloomy months until the return of a favorable climate. And that's the reason why ferns were the earliest plant life to recover after the catastrophe. The subsequent problem that plants had to deal with was being consumed. Unlike us, there were several hungry creatures out there who relished the foliage, if only plants were capable of fleeing. Instead, defence mechanisms had to be developed. A coat of thin hair may deter small insects, while spines and thorns may do the job against bigger animals. And the foliage of some has unpleasant tasting chemicals to ensure that animals only take a bite once. In exceptional cases, plants have totally reversed roles. The Venus flytrap thrives in deficient soil, so it makes up for its poor diet by consuming meat. More like taking vitamin supplements, really. A naive insect is lured by the hope of sugary nectar, but this is just a ploy. Once caught, it begins digesting its prey. But animals have also proved themselves beneficial to plants, particularly following the meteorite. With a whole new world to settle into, plants required help in spreading themselves out. Many possess fruits with hooks that attach to fur so they can be transported over kilometers. Some possess seeds that grow inside juicy berries. This rhinoceros consumes the berries and sets out towards a new place. Coming out of its body undamaged, the seeds are now in the ideal environment to germinate. Plants are critical to life on the planet. Following the meteorite, they had to deal with the same difficulties that the animals faced, searching for nourishment, guarding themselves against foes, and multiplying. Plants have come a long way, creating a range of fascinating survival mechanisms in their quest to take over the Earth again. silent assassin. 400 million years ago, even before the dinosaur age, sharks had started roaming the oceans. 
65 million years ago, when the meteorite collided with Earth, several species would have been destroyed. The ones who escaped the catastrophe swam into the shelters of the deep seas and depended on their excellent hunting abilities to endure the rough times. It's difficult to locate prey in the vast oceans. It becomes darker and darker as you go deeper and deeper. Layers of dust and soot as a result of the meteorite would have further darkened things up. But sharks have such incredible sensory perception that they know precisely what's happening around them. Their eyes contain a unique mirror-like layer which enables them to see in faint light. And with the help of their sensitive noses, they are able to easily detect decomposing corpses. In the present day, the hammerhead shark takes this sense of smell to the next level. Its nostrils lie at the tips of two extensions that grow out from the sides of its head. If it catches the scent of a prey, it sways its head from side to side to try to locate it. And when the smell is evenly intense in both nostrils, supper is ready. But sharks possess another extremely complicated quality. They possess a sixth sense. This nurse shark has spots in front of the nostrils which act as sensory pores. These pores can sense frail electric signals emitted by muscles, even a beating heart one mile away. So in these dark waters, you can be traced anywhere. Maybe their excellent swimming abilities helped sharks survive the meteorite. These elegant creatures are special because their skeletons are not made of bones, but a delicate rubbery substance known as cartilage. Owing to this, sharks have greater maneuverability in water. The ability to make abrupt U-turns aids them in chasing down their victims. And did you know that if a shark ceases to swim, it will drown and die? In order to stay alive, it requires water to flow through its gills. But at present, there is one shark whose dexterity and swiftness in the water has given it as frightening a reputation as the T-Rex. The Great White zips through the water using its powerful tail as a propeller. Different from the majority of sharks, the Great White is warm-blooded, which means that its muscles are at the ideal temperature for making swift and deadly assaults. And when a Great White gets going, its ferocity has no limits. Sharks have stayed alive due to their fantastic form. Today, 300 different species dwell in our oceans. These great predators are so well suited to life in the deep that they are thriving today just as well as their prehistoric predecessors. So you believe that dinosaurs are dead? Well, think again, for in reality, we are surrounded by them. Because dinosaurs are still alive in the form of birds. 65 million years ago, by the time a meteorite collided with the Earth, two separate groups of reptiles had developed bird-like features. The 
Pterosaurs were aerial behemoths that ruled the skies. Their giant wings were rubbery flaps of skin which were hard to fold and didn't function that properly if torn. The other category were the birds. They had a better structure. Birds developed from tiny tree-dwelling dinosaurs and the fossil carcasses of one of the earliest, Archaeopteryx, shows that they undoubtedly possessed feathers. Feathers must have provided it with the heat to move swiftly, even in the cooler parts of the day. When the meteorite struck Earth, the pterosaurs were wiped out due to cold and hunger. While the small-sized descendants of Archaeopteryx managed to fly towards safer places. The simple presence of feathers establishes a creature as a bird. With this unique tool, they have turned out to be excellent flying machines. Birds owe their aerial dominance to the shape of their wings. The wing of a bird curves slightly from front to back, creating an aerofoil shape which actually lifts the bird up into the air. And yes, variations in the design of wings dictate the type of flight. Hawk-like predators glide noiselessly over the skies. A swallow prefers swiftness and stamina. And small hummingbirds in the rainforests can flap their wings 100 times per second. As a shield against cold, feathers proved to be more useful than fur. Thanks to them, the birds could survive the extreme winter resulting from the meteorite collision. Now it's only a bird that can thrive on the Antarctic ice cap during winter, the coldest place on the planet. Here, devoid of terrestrial hunters, penguins prefer swimming to flying, so their feathers are utilised only for keeping themselves warm. Penguins have a feathery underbelly which enables them to warm their eggs to temperatures sufficient for the babies to hatch. One other reason for the survival of the birds post the meteorite collision was the incubation of their eggs. It gave their babies a better chance of hatching instead of freezing to death. but it put the parents under constant danger of being attacked by hunters on the ground. So, to prevent being easy prey, they've made their nests in places that other predators find difficult to reach. After insects, birds are the most flourishing set of animals ever to have existed. The basic pattern of their wings has not changed for over 140 million years. So when the meteorite crashed into the Earth, they actually took off to the clouds to avoid the destruction. Turn your attention to any gloomy, clammy area of the planet and surely you will have come across these tiny guys. Amphibians over 350 million years back pulled themselves out of the water and turned out to be the earliest four-legged creatures to set foot on land. With a variety of luscious stuff to eat, initially this was amphibian paradise until those darned reptiles entered the scene with a taste for frog's legs. So they chose a life living deep beneath soil and leaves. And maybe that's how, 65 million years ago, they survived the brunt of the meteorite. 
they went into hiding. The meteorite, in quite a few ways, provided the amphibians with new possibilities. It produced a tidal wave which transported enormous amounts of water onto land. And amphibians can never wander off far from water. Their skin is not capable of retaining moisture, so in arid places they shrink and die. But they have unique skin exuding slime which permits air and water to move straight through. This means amphibians can actually breathe through both their skin and their lungs. Keeping their skin damp has enabled them to live outside water, but confined them to living in its vicinity. Almost every amphibian needs to go into water in order to breed. The recently formed lakes, which were a result of tidal waves, meant they could lay millions of eggs and proliferate rapidly. After many days, the eggs turn into tadpoles that resemble fish more than their parents. And then the miracle takes place known as metamorphosis. The tadpoles develop legs, lose their tails, and after many months, are all set to get out of water. So, successive generations perform the same act of change from water to land again and again, just like the first amphibians did. Frogs are the most flourishing group of amphibians. So it comes as no news to see the biggest variety dwelling in some of the most damp places on the planet, tropical rainforests. Here, some chose to live in the trees. This tree frog has grown gooey pads to enable it to hold on to the smooth leaf surfaces. And when it feels like changing trees, it takes off. And frogs have succeeded in developing some ingenious ways to prevent getting eaten up. Unique colours and patterns enable them to camouflage themselves. These poison arrow frogs are a bit more showy, flaunting their vibrant colours and incredible markings. But these colours show that their skin is extremely poisonous. And then there's this frog, who would not be out of place in a James Bond movie. To start with, this tomato frog inflates itself up to drive away the snake. If this trick fails, it becomes vicious, exuding a gluey mucus from its skin, which seals the jaws of the snake for days. The meteorite provided the amphibians with the opportunity to prosper. But being confined to water meant they could never achieve great success. Tortoises and turtles share an ancestry as old as that of the prehistoric dinosaurs. Early in their history, these reptiles adopted extreme steps to protect themselves. Their scales turned into horny armors, wrapping their body in a sturdy, firm box. And the safety these shells offered was assessed when, 65 million years ago, a meteorite collided with the Earth. Half of the Earth's vegetation was set on fire by many thousands of tons of molten rock dropping back to Earth. Several tortoises would have escaped the flames by hiding under the ground in deep burrows, and they would have remained there until the ground above cooled. 
But not only did it cool, it froze. Months of gloom ensued, and the cold would have made it very hard for these reptiles to survive. But even under extreme conditions, frosts hardly ever go beyond two inches beneath the surface. And by markedly reducing its body activity, the tortoise utilizes very little energy, relying on its own fat reserves. When time came to come out into the world of the living, its vegetarian eating habits implied it would generally find food. In the meantime, looking for shelter from the storms in the open waters were the marine turtles. They had realized that it was much easier to haul their weighty, huge armor in water compared to land. But even when they have adjusted to a life at sea, every year they come back to coastal waters to reproduce. As females have to lay their eggs on the ground, and their key survival tactic is to lay enormous quantities of them. Even though they reproduce more compared to the other reptiles, they hardly care for them. The parents have long abandoned them by the time the eggs hatch. Now these newborns must face every obstacle all alone in an unsafe world in order to stay alive. Today they face threats by predatory frigate birds, in the years prior to the meteorite, it would have been pouncing pterosaurs. But due to their large numbers, some survive. The passing of millions of years have seen minor changes in the shape of the shell. Moreover, defending the owner from bruises and bumps have turned some into a weapon. This plowshare tortoise, hailing from Madagascar, is equipped with a bony spike, which he employs to fend off enemies. His display of might helps him achieve what he dearly wants, while his bruised rival can only see from a distance. And though tortoises and turtles are slow-moving creatures, it doesn't stop them from acting smart. This alligator-snapping turtle waits still on the riverbed with its mouth fully open. With a worm-like thing on the end of its tongue held as bait, it waits for its victim to come near. And it's dinner time. These reptiles have extremely beneficial armor, and it has definitely helped them in a great way. It looks as if the meteorite had little influence on their lives. If everything goes all right, these creatures will continue to move without resistance for the coming millions of years.